Hello and welcome everyone from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and one of the MCs here at Gold. And with me here is a special guest and I'm excited to talk to her about the upcoming presentation here at Gold. And it's Tamika jackson Dyer. Welcome, Tamika. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you here. It's uh, you are going to be part of our Gold Learning Day coming up in just a little bit. And the topic of the Gold Learning Day is called Got Milk Skills and Tools for Improving Low Milk Production. And I know you and I, we chatted before about this topic. It is... <laughs> This topic will never go away, right? And there is so much still to discover and to learn about. But before you jump into this and we talk a little bit more about your presentation, first of all, I would like you to tell us where in the world are you? Because we have an international audience. I am in the States. I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Beautiful. I lived briefly in the area just for a very short time. So I roughly know where you are in the world. So it's <laughs> wonderful to have you here. Now, Tamika, let's talk more about you. First of all, you have such an impressive background. Um, you have uh, um, you, uh, you, uh, you have your own lactation business, which I love the title, Crazy Milk Lady Lactation Support. Uh, <laughs> you provide a voice for the populations who are historically uh, underrepresented in the conversations about breastfeeding support and lactation, of course. So you uh, are offering so much uh, to the community. So talk a little bit about yourself uh, and your background here to us. Well, I started at, well, technically I started as a mom who was breastfeeding and wanted to tell everybody about how wonderful it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was a, a peer counselor before I knew what a peer counselor was. Um, but professionally, I started out as a, a WIC breastfeeding peer counselor. Uh, and I did that for five years. And during my time with WIC, I decided I wanted to be an IBCLC. So I started uh, taking classes and trainings. And then when the uh, opportunity for an internship came up with the state of Michigan, um, I went ahead and applied. And out of I don't know, like 50 applicants across the state. There were only three spots and I made it. Mm. Uh, it was a two-year internship. I got didactic lectures. Um, I got to work in the hospital, OB clinic, uh, and then took the test and passed it. Uh, so I have been an IBCLC now for five years. I'll actually be recertifying for the first time this year. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done I've worked everywhere that you can do lactation except for a pediatrician's office. And that's the next place on my list that I want to try. <laughs> that is the next place on your list. And it's so needed, right? I feel like, and you probably have noticed too, that uh, often pediatricians and have talked to pediatricians. So it's not something I, you know, I, I'm making up or just putting out there um, that there is very little education on lactation uh, for yeah. them in, in the medical, at medical school. And that needs to change. And uh, having a uh, lactation, an IBCLC at a pediatrician, office is for me it's a no-brainer right I mean yeah. we're talking about the baby and uh, you know obviously you know the human milk is absolutely wonderful and has these amazing properties that uh, we need to shout from the rooftops here and <laughs> and where is you know the pediatrician uh, should be part of this of course and the pediatrician office there as well so that's that's wonderful so you have that planned out for the future there as well and talk about your uh, other accomplishments that you have, um, you know, uh, especially working with, uh, you know, populations that are not always at the table, and and we have to do a better job of that. And 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 uh, this is why lactation uh, IBCLCs uh, are so important. So talk to us about your work there. So I am the manager of community collaboration for Cofective. I actually started out as a contractor with the company. Um, initially just to get like community feedback on different projects and uh, educational offerings. Um, and now we're uh, doing a really big project. We have a Kellogg grant, almost $2 million. We're working with uh, seven hospitals across the state to uh, incorporate community voice into uh, the hospital task force as they try to achieve baby friendly. 
Um, I'm also the breastfeeding subject matter expert with um, KITIS, which is the Center for Health Disparities, Innovations and Studies <laughs> through uh, Eastern Michigan University. Uh, it's a CDC REACH grant. We work with Asian Americans. It's through the Healthy Asian American Program. Um, and my main focus is here in Wayne County in Hamtramck, which is a little town that is actually inside the city of Detroit. Um, they have the most uh, racially diverse um, community in the state. Uh, mm -hmm. And we are working with the uh, Bengali speaking population, the Bangla women, um, to get them uh, breastfeeding education. Uh, I've trained several uh, classes of peer counselors, mm -hmm. so that now there are other women in the community who can help. So that that was really fun, because we don't have, um, we don't have that here, even though the population needs it. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. That sounds uh, wonderful. And I, I love hearing that you're training peer counselors because who else in their community, who else understands this woman than, you know, somebody from their own community, right? And mm -hmm. uh, so peer counselors are so essential, so important. And oh, I love I love that project that you're part of. It's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. So how many women do you think you're reaching um, with these programs? Oh, let's see. We've done two classes. We have one more coming up. They want um, some community health workers to be trained. I'm uh -huh. also a community health worker certified. Right. Um, and so they wanted to train some community health workers. So we would have a larger uh, workforce. So we're working on getting that training scheduled. Um, we've had a couple of community baby showers. So it's probably Ooh. been, um, I would say maybe 60, 60 women total who've been uh -huh. touched uh, by the project. But Every time you uh, train a yes. peer counselor, right? It's each one teach one, so you're reaching uh, an exponential number of of women, uh, and getting them the education and support that they need. Yeah, and they of course talk to other, uh, you know, um, members of the community and get the word out, and and this is kind of a much bigger, has a much bigger effect that way as well. It's wonderful, fantastic. Okay, now let's talk about something fun here coming up. Your presentation, your presentation here at Gold, and uh, your presentation is titled "Counseling and Anticipatory Guidance to Reduce." Perceived Insufficient Milk Production. Absolutely love that title. And we had a little sneak peek of your presentation earlier. You have beautiful pictures in your presentation. And you mentioned you're a storyteller. So uh, I can't wait for that <laughs> to happen soon here at Gold. Tell us a little bit about what we can look forward to. So one of the the biggest issues that women face around the world is the perception of insufficient milk supply. Um, that's a bigger problem than actual insufficient milk supply. And so uh, this is a topic that comes up constantly in the work, even when, you know, baby's gaining well, mom is pumping bottles, fill it, but she thinks because of social media or her friends yeah. or whatever, that she's supposed to have this freezer full of milk. And if she doesn't, then she's not making enough. And so making sure that they understand what's normal, what to expect um, before baby comes, that's really, really important. But if you don't get them before that, that letting them know that, um, you know, it's totally normal not to be able to pump eight ounce bottle <laughs> two days after you give birth. Um, <laughs> and yeah. so, uh, or that if you are pumping, you know, four ounces at a time, you're actually doing more than what is expected. And, um, you know, just normalizing what's normal, because we've gotten so far away from that normalizing what norm what's normal and often you know how are these women and families supposed to know what's normal because they've never maybe seen it maybe that you know some some of these families start out maybe this is the first baby they ever held right <laughs> it's like <laughs> especially with smaller families or if the fa other family members they moved away or they're not close so uh, first of all that now my question to you is have you seen and you mentioned social media an increase of this uh, perceived uh, insufficient milk production this perception since social media because you mentioned the pictures and I've seen them of course too with the freezers full of milk and uh, do you think that that has increased or is a you know is it a topic that's always been around of course but now, now it's getting worse yeah I think that social media has made it much worse because you have mm -hmm. these people with these incredible freezer stashes and people yeah. don't understand that hyperlactinemia is not a good thing that's not something you want um you know yeah, you don't want yeah. to be pumping gallons of milk I've had a yeah. client who had that issue um yeah. or the fact that um there's all these uh 
things that are marketed to help boost milk supply and help. And it's like, you don't need a boost. You're doing exactly what you need to be doing for your baby. So yeah, it definitely. um, And of course, don't get me into the artificial milk substitute marketing. (laughs) (laughs) You got, you got me there. I got like my hair, the hairs on my skin are sticking up because of that is such an (laughs) aggravating topic and and you're right it's uh, the marketing techniques being used there as well and using the insecurities and that's what makes me so angry of of new mothers new families who are you know all all they want to do is do the best for their babies and always uh, wondering am i doing it right do i have enough milk and kind of using that and and latching onto that and trying to sell things that you know mm-hmm. or, or, or creating a need that is not really there so yeah focusing on what's really normal and and educating families about that it's so so vital and and uh, giving them also trust trust a little trust in themselves and their bodies that that uh, you know just that they are able to uh, feed their baby in, mm-hmm. in that sense so that's wonderful well thank you so much uh, for talking to me about it and before i let you go give us a little nugget of wisdom or what you are hoping our viewers will take away with uh, from this presentation i want them to understand that no matter how um how much you think you have prepared uh, your clients or patients they're still going to have questions and patience is mm-hmm. the biggest tool to have, uh, especially because you have to remember all of these other voices that are out here um, speaking to these moms about what to expect, what's not normal, what they're not doing, what they're not capable of, um, and to uh, support them uh, in feeling empowered within themselves because your body grew this baby, your body can keep doing that. Uh, you don't need any outside help. So that's really the, the most important thing, being patient and continuing to give that same message over and over again, even though you might feel like a broken record sometimes. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, Tamika, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you here, and I am very much looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And the presentation, of course, will be live on August 22nd for our live day there. Two more presentations are part of this package of our goal learning day here. And you can, and this is for, of course, to our audience now, you can find out more on goallearning.com. And uh, of course, to our audience as well, if you cannot attend the live day, all the presentations are recorded so everyone can watch them at their leisure. Again, thank you, Tamika, for being here with me today. And thank you to our audience. And I hope to see everyone at the Goal Learning Day in August. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.